Welcome to The One Who Seeks, where you are the one who seeks. My name is Tara. I am your intuitive tarot reader. I use tarot as a tool to open up the channels of your intuition. By tapping into your unawakened subconscious, you will answer the questions that you seek. I am not a psychic, although it may seem like it sometimes. Take what resonates and leave the rest. Always remember, the freedom of choice is your power. Only you can make it happen with your actions. What are you seeking? Okay, hello and welcome to The One Who Seeks, where you are the one who seeks. Hmm, our white sage incense burning for protection. Okay, so let's do the opening prayer. I protect myself with a clear and malleable bubble that reflects what needs to be seen for your highest good and for the good of others. I invite in only that is of love to join us in this collective reading. I ask the archangels, Michael, to protect us with the light so bright that it surrounds us. Gabriel, to help us be a clear and open channel to the messages coming in. Raphael, to guide us on our path to enlightenment. Thank you for being present in the here and now with us. Please get comfortable. We are open and receptive to our own intuitions and we honor the emotions and lessons that will, will be revealed to us. Please send us signs we will recognize to let us know you are here with us. Okay, I haven't read that opening prayer in a while. And um, I got a massage the other day and she said that someone had left my body um, after working on me for a while. So I am trying to be extra cautious. Uh, I do have my candles here as well. I did also spray some protection spray. It's an aura spray, crystal infused mist, which is usually the only thing that I use because I'm in the fifth wheel and I am like freaking out about this over here. <laughs> um, you know, just in lighting these candles, I have this, um, lighter long lighter i don't know what you call it really but it's such a large flame that comes out of here like i literally thought i was gonna light my trailer on fire just lighting my candles here so anyway um so today we are going to do the 12 houses spread here let me close this sun coming in there all right we can still see all right so we're gonna find out about all the different aspects of your life This reading is for the collective, so take what resonates and leave the rest. Okay. So, thank you, Spirit, for being here with us and guiding us. Let me be a clear and open channel for the messages coming in. Please tell us about the 12 houses of our life. So I'm just going to leave them face down for now. And then as we go around, um, I will flip them over. Okay, 
we are using the Wonderland Tarot. by Barbara Moore, illustrated by Eugene Smith. This book is amazing. I actually have not read any of the actual meanings out of the book yet. Um, the pictures really t tell a lot. Um, we might end up pulling a card or two to read out of the book today. Since I'm only using the one deck today, If something seems like it's really standing out. Okay, so here we have the Queen of Swords. And this is your first house. This is your identity. Card one represents how the individual defines themselves and expresses their identity through their personality, appearance, and physicality. Associations, Fire, Wands, Aries, Mars. So it's interesting that this is how somebody identifies themselves through personality, appearance, and physicality because this Queen of Swords here has a very, very strong presence. I don't know how you could miss her. First of all, she's on the top of a mountain here. Uh, you know, it's kind of like, how did she get to the top of this mountain with this big, beautiful chair in this beautiful red dress it's almost magical in a sense that she is up here she is up high she is on a pedestal and queens are about nurturing and, and motherly love um, being a wife and swords are about your mind and challenges, right? And she's up here on this top of the mountain. So it must have been a huge challenge for her to get here. She didn't just get here overnight. This, this was over time, right? So your identity is being accumulated step by step. Right, just so to stay as you're climbing a mountain and with each step that you take to get to the top of this mountain, you are getting stronger. You are getting wiser. There, There's um, lessons that you learn at every turn, right? And how to survive and how to keep going. And up here, the air is quite thin. It's harder to breathe up here. So, you know, probably the less movement that you make is better for you so that you are not overexerting yourself and overexerting your body. Okay, but you definitely, you make a presence when you walk into a room. Okay, you look like you're fit. You're, you have determination on your face. You are in charge. You are in control. All right. And then the second house is resources. Card two represents the individual's financial situation, their income and how it's earned, possessions and feelings of self-worth, associations, earth, pentacles, Taurus, and Venus. Okay, and you have the two of cups here. The two of cups represents um, a unity. You see here that they are drinking out of their goblets and they have their arms crossed in order to take their sip, symbolizing a um, connection with each other. Right, and they come from different worlds. We have a rabbit and we have a man here. They are both dressed in suits. This one's a little bit more on the um, like circus side. 
the rabbits dress very nicely in a green suit. Uh, it does look like his ears are wrapped up though. There might be something about communication um, that needs to be tied up or you're not hearing something. And you have all these uh, cards everywhere here. It looks like you're making peanut butter and jelly sandwiches together. And uh, it looks like, like a piece of pie, a cupcake. There's a lot of cake going on here. And pie again. So something about baking and uh, mixing the ingredients together. So you have the teapot here is floating in the air and it's pouring into both of these cups and they're intertwined with each other. I feel like this is about coming together in unexpected ways or unexpected places because this doesn't really seem like the kind of place that you would sit down and play cards and start baking or eating all these baked goods. There's not even a, um, a picnic blanket here. It's like, it wasn't really planned. Um, it seems like somebody actually dropped the ball here. Uh, they dropped the picnic basket with all of the game in here, the card, the deck of cards, and um, the tea and crumpets, right? So this almost seems like it's a happy accident. And uh, maybe the rabbit came to help, or this man came to help the rabbit uh, pick all this up. It looks like he's pointing down to all the stuff on the ground here, saying like, hey, do you need help with all that? This rabbit is barefoot, uh, lucky rabbit's foot comes to mind. You know, kind of his arms back behind his back here, like your hands are tied, his ears are tied. This is about emotions. And how maybe um, whoever dropped this probably felt a little embarrassed by it because it, it's made such a mess. And now, you know, who's gonna eat this, this cake and these pies that are on the ground? They've already touched the ground. Um, you know, unless you got that two second rule and you want to eat it off the ground anyway, but it's almost like it's worthless now. And these things take a long time to bake, right? And so, um, I feel like maybe whoever dropped this is feeling a little defeated by it. And a little upset and just needs that extra comfort. All right, and this is about your resources. So maybe you are a baker. Maybe you were a poker player. Maybe it's how you make your money is by winning. Right, and this is your feelings of self-worth. So we're talking about being embarrassed that you dropped the ball. You just need a little bit of help. All right, so help is coming with the financial situation. Um, you are going to partner up with somebody that's going to help you out with your finances. Okay, and then the third house, we have environment. Card three represents the individual's knowledge and ability to communicate what they are feeling and thinking. 
local travel, siblings and neighbors, associations, air, swords, Gemini and Mercury. Okay, this person is taking a nap. I mean, this almost kind of looks like the hanged man, but the swords are hanging from the tree instead of the man. This is the four of swords. Swords are about, um, so we do have swords here too. We have uh, the mind and challenges again. And fours are about foundation. Uh, this man looks like he is taking a nap. He should probably be watching something. He almost kind of looks like a king. Um, he's got his staff here. And the one sword laying with him and the other three are hanging from the tree. This kind of reminds me of a vendor as well. Somebody who maybe is forging these swords and is over here trying to sell them and show them off. Okay, and this is about knowledge and the ability to communicate what they're feeling and thinking. Well, this person is not talking at all. Um, but we do have local travel, does look like he is traveling through these woods here and is taking a nap. And like I said, maybe it could be like a vendor. So that's where your um, siblings and neighbors might be coming in here to where you're selling something to them. Hmm. The fourth house, home and family. Card four represents the individual's domestic life, family life, foundations and attachments, emotional security and internal needs. Associations are water, cups, cancer, and the moon. This is the nine of swords. So this is somebody who is having nightmares. Uh, so your emotional security and internal needs are not being met. Um, family life is a little rocky. It's feeling a little dead here. You got um, some flowers that look like they're dying in this vase over here. It looks like the time is about 2.20, maybe 2.22 on the clock here. which is also about unity. Twos are unity. Um, twos do represent a relationship as well. Um, it could be a lover or it could just be like a partner that you're working with in um, some sort of work, right? So you kind of feel like you're playing a game of chess here and you have to be strategic about your emotions. Maybe you have to hold back how you feel. Um, because if you do say something, these daggers are gonna come falling down on you. And you don't wanna see that. The fifth house Creativity. Card five represents the individual's ability to attract people and situations into their life. Give and receive love. Be creative and have fun. Associations, fire, wands, Leo, the sun. This is the queen of cups. So she is the mother of emotion. Okay, she has all of her emotions in check when it comes to being creative. and giving and receiving love. All right, so this is how you attract people and situations into your life. Um, 
you you're very decorated here right you definitely have that creative spark you have your throne here that looks like shells and uh maybe even sort of kind of like some waves here you're very decorated your hair is even pink here you are creative in all aspects of what you do and people are going to be attracted to that because here you are on the beach where most people will just have their towel or maybe like some sort of a lawn chair to sit in and they're usually in their bikini or swimsuit um, but here you are sitting in a full gown with your throne and your giant goblet of emotions that you have in check. So people are going to be looking at you for sure when it comes to your creativity and having fun. They're going to be attracted to this. And they're going to want to know your story. Where did you come from? How did you get here? Did you create this? All right. The sixth house is work and service. Card six represents the individual's health and responsibilities. Their ability to solve problems and make decisions and lead an orderly life. Associations, Earth, Pentacles, Virgo, Mercury. This is a Six of Pentacles. I mean, it's interesting because we're getting a lot of same suits that are with the associations. Okay, and this is, um, it's like somebody who's throwing a party. This is the tea party, right? Which is funny because this looks exactly the same as this card over here. This looks like this happened first and then this was the aftermath of it. Like they're celebrating the great party that happened because look at the big mess. And usually if there's a huge mess like that, like people are having a good time. So maybe you're a party planner. You know, it looks like you're inspecting this. It looks like a macaroon. Uh, we do have the scales here. So some sort of a balance needs to happen. Six is harmony. Pentacles is tangible things. Wealth and also spirituality. So this could be somebody who's very intuitive and makes decisions from the feeling that they get, not by logic, right? And this is very orderly here. It's set up very pretty. You know, the teacups go here, the teapot's gonna be there. We have the three tiers of the cookies and baked goods. We have a couple of cakes up here and we have all the little pedestals that give it the height, difference in, in heights. Okay, but these two people here look a little worried. Uh, they do have their plates out. It seems like maybe they think they're not gonna get any or they're worried about the quality of how it's going to taste because he is inspecting it before giving it to them. And they just seemed a little concerned. Pay attention to the details there. All right, and then we have, and there's the actual hanged man there. So like I said, this looked like the hanged man to me here. Uh, this hanged man is hanging off of a clock and not from the tree as he normally would be. So this is the seventh house in relationships. Card seven represents the individual's ability to socialize and interact with others commitment, be fair to themselves and those around them. 
associations or air, swords, Libra, and Venus, right? And he's kind of hanging out in the air here. He's upside down, uh, drinking his tea, which seemed very impossible to do upside down. Um, but this man is able to see the world from another perspective. It is one o'clock on the clock there, uh, which is new beginnings. So you might be having a new beginning here. Um, that could even mean like January, which is, you know, the first month. Um, It does seem kind of like it's springtime here. We do have some flowers growing and we get a lot of vines growing here and the sun kind of trickling down in the back. Uh, he does not seem concerned at all. He has put himself here. Uh, this is not like somebody has tied him up and he can't move. This is where he wants to be. This is how he wants to interact with others. Right, and to be fair to themselves and to those around them, he's seeing all perspectives. He's seeing your perspective, and then if he turns over, he can see his perspective. Right, and he can turn over at any time. There is some sort of time limit on there. I'm just hearing time limit. Um, before that, you know, that clock, I can almost hear it in my head. It's like grandfather clock, so it's going to chime. It is one o'clock. It's on the hour, which means it's going to chime one time, right? Well, actually, if we're doing it in military time, I believe that would be 13 times. It will chime 13 times to indicate it is one o'clock in the afternoon. Okay, and then three plus one is four, which is foundation. All right, and then we have the eighth house, which is secret represents what the individual needs to let go of and move forward. Also includes sex, death, taxes, loans, and inheritance. Associations are water, cups, Scorpio, and Pluto. Okay, this is the king of wands. He is the father of action. Wands are about passion and fire and taking action. They are the fastest suit. You know, secrets spread fast. All right, um, this is what the individual needs to let go of to move forward. And if you are standing here balancing things on your nose, it's going to make it really hard for you to walk forward, right? You could do it, I'm sure. It would be very small baby steps. Also includes sex, death, taxes, loans, and inheritance. So maybe this man has just inherited this stuff here. This fancy wing back chair, this suit, this crown, this snake. And he is having to have to balance, right? Here we have the balance and he's balancing here. Kind of have to balance over here too. You know, I don't really feel like there's really anything sexual about this. <laughs> um, just seems kind of like a, an older man having a good time. Right, and 
because of the inheritance, there was probably a death, right? Or some sort of taxes or a loan. Maybe he's just borrowing these things. But maybe these things are holding him back from moving forward. Okay, and then we have the King of Swords, which is Humpty Dumpty on the wall. Humpty Dumpty had a great fall. All the king's horses and all the king's men tried to put Humpty back together again. So the ninth house is growth. Card nine represents the individual's consideration of philosophy, higher education, it's funny because he's holding a book here and swords are about the mind and he looks very prestigious here sitting on this wall. Higher education and foreign interests, also long distance travel. Associations are fire, wands, Sagittarius, and Jupiter. Right. Um, once again, we're up in the mountains here. This could be the other side of your identity. Right, maybe the wall is back here or somewhere near. Um, and you know, we have the queen. Oh, so this is the queen and the king. So we do have the pair here. We have the mother and the father. We have the husband and the wife. We have the nurturing and the control, right? So that's your growth and your identity. You know, this also kind of feels like how people see you. You're here, you're holding your book as a scholar as if you are a professor, you are the one in charge. This is your wall. You built this wall. You created this wall. You designed this wall. And it took a lot of challenges to get here. It wasn't automatic. It wasn't something that happened overnight either. Right, which is interesting because it says long distance travel. And I was saying if this wall is back behind these mountains over here, that's quite a far way to go to meet your counterpart, right? Because they are together, the king and the queen. But sometimes they need to separate so that they can learn something new, so they can deal with some sort of situation. The 10th house is career. We have the five of wands, which is about competition. Uh, this card represents the individual's career and profession, their reputation, public persona, ambitions and motivations, success. Associations are Earth, Pentacles, Capricorn, and Saturn. So in your career, there are definitely some obstacles that need to be overcome. Everybody here has a passion. Everybody here has that fire for whatever their job is. And you're all fighting to, you know, win over the, the, the queen's uh, appreciation. You know, everybody wants that job. Everybody wants that um, promotion. And so there's going to be a struggle here. It's funny because they have all these pink flamingos in here as well who seem to be fighting. It's like each person has their own flamingo who is on their side helping them to fight.
Hmm. And the 11th house community represents how the individual relates to friends and groups of other people, social activities, societies, hopes, and dreams. Air, swords, Aquarius, and Uranus. So four of cups, this is depression. Um, you don't relate very well to your friends and groups of people. You're not a very social person. Um, I feel like you feel like your, your hopes and dreams have been squandered. There's a lot of emotion here. Uh, you have air and swords, which are challenges. So, you, you know, you're having a hard time. You're looking at these cups like you lost something, but you do have a cup back here. And this person is trying to help you and show you, like, this is still here, but you don't see it. Right? This is, you're not interacting, interacting socially in any activities. Because you're in a, a depressed mode. All right, and then we have the 12th house. And there's that flamingo again. All right, there's the flamingos from there. And it looks like the two winners, maybe. Yeah, and I feel like this one's like, that's my flamingo. As he's saying, that's my flamingo. And he's bending over backwards. This is the chariot. This is the 12th house. This is your shadow self represents who or what might be working against the individual without their knowledge to prevent them from succeeding in their endeavors. Water, Cups, Pisces, and Neptune. So what's working against you? Uh, first of all, you're trying to play golf with a flamingo's head and uh, a, a mole, I'm guessing, a mole. Right, and then when I hear mole, I hear like think about the person who is secretive and deceptive in a company who is trying to to gather secrets to bring to their company um, to win. Right, because here we go, we have the competition here again. Right, and this is literally a game. I'm playing um, cricket, I guess. <laughs> cricket, uh, polo. Golf. So, you know, when your tools have a mind of their own, it's going to be hard for you to win, right? Especially if they're not on your side. You know, you can have as much strategy as you want. But there's going to be, ultimately, these other entities who are going to have the control. The chariot is about fast movement. So, I feel like maybe you bought into something, right? If he's the vendor, you bought all these swords. And... You bought into some sort of secret or information, but it is actually making you have nightmares. You thought they were going to help you, but they're not helping you at all. all right, because we have this unity here. And we have two queens. We have two kings. So there is a sense of family. Um, husband and wife. Very strong presence of that. Um, nurturing and being, having control. So 
so let's see we do have all of the suits although we only have one of the pinnacles right so maybe that's where you're lacking here is financially um or spiritually something about the harmony is out of balance and everybody is kind of trying to put on a show I feel like I feel like she's kind of putting on a show here she's kind of putting on a show he's putting on a show he's putting on a show he's putting on a show there's a lot of competition going on and you're feeling a little depleted about it. Like the tools aren't working for you. Feel like you need to stare something face on and not be looking the other way because this is how we end up getting hurt you know wrapping up your ears here see no evil hear no evil you know where's the the speak no evil All right, we have the other rabbit here, but he's inspecting, right? So that could be the speak no evil. And um, we do have a lot of rabbits here. There's definitely something about time that moves into uh, more of a competition maybe it's like a race against time in order to win right and have these be on your side have that unity but there's definitely a lot of worry happening the worried looks on people's faces, the sleepiness, kind of the exhaustion, having to look at something in another way from up above, from a different perspective, from a different area. Maybe this is even just traveling somewhere else. You know, it feels like it's fall here, but then it's spring here. Feels like spring again, feels like summer. This is like winter. And then you're out in the middle of the ocean. You're feeling lost. There's a lot of struggle. There's a lot of competition going on. Trying to figure out what your talents are. What is your talent? You know, what is your talent? And maybe you have a lot of different talents and you're not really sure which one that you want to do, right? And so you're struggling to decide which one. Who's going to go first? What are you going to do first? And this is why you're trying to decide here. You got three out of the five that you narrowed it down to. But the one that you didn't even consider is clearly the winner. Once again, you know, this guy with the arched back, it's a different perspective. Looking at it another way, he could be the judge, he could be um, the referee. To 
telling you if you're out of line or not. Your cheerleader telling you if you're being, you're doing it well. It's definitely causing you a lot of anguish and you're very worried about how people are going to think about you and what you're doing and why are you doing it like this? That's so strange. That's so stupid. Why would you use a flamingo and a mole here to play this game? But maybe that's exactly what you need. feel like you just need to kind of uh, sit down and contemplate. Like we have a sit, 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 take a nap, All right? This one's standing, but has a chair. This one's just hanging upside down. I feel like you're juggling too much when you're standing. Right? You're trying to become waitlist. So we have like mother, unity, foundation, knowledge, uh, nurturing mother again. We have harmony seeing a different perspective we have the father in control and another father in control five is about changes four is about foundation chariots about fast movement you need to nurture yourself in order to take control and take fast movement towards whatever it is that you decide on Okay. Well, there you go. That is your story. However it resonates for you. Um, you know, it doesn't, I mean, it doesn't really resonate with me as much. So please leave in the comments, you know, how it resonates with you. Because I am just reading with the messages that are coming through. All right. Well, thank you for being here. And I will see you on your next reading. Bye. I want to thank you and our angels for being present for the messages that have come through in this reading. If you found this to be helpful, please like and share this content so others can benefit as well. Seek the subscribe button and don't forget to get notifications so you never miss a reading. The more love you share, the more love you receive. And you can find more love right here in these other videos. For more information about this channel, personal readings, swag, and donations, check the links in the description box.